What's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm here at the Carlisle Four Nationals in Pennsylvania. Walking around, came across something very, very special. This is a 2011 Shelby GT350. Now you might be scratching your head saying, well, hold on a second. I thought Ford came back out with the Shelby GT350 in 2015. And guess what? You are correct. In 2011 though, Carroll Shelby was still around. He was about 87 years old. He wanted to bring that magic, that Shelby GT350 magic back and he did it in a big way. He basically took that five liter engine and supercharged it. Whipple supercharger, you're looking at 550 horsepower. This car back in 2011 cost about $64,000. Built at Shelby American and sold at a number cap of no more than 2,200 examples. So let's go ahead, dive in and see, is this the ultimate modern Shelby GT350? Right off the bat, you'll notice the styling. We have very, very unique color combination, obviously ties it back to 1965, all that great history with the Shelby GT350. When we come to the front, you'll see the work that they did at Shelby American. This is not something that was done at the Ford factory. So you have a totally unique front fascia to the Shelby GT350. So much different than obviously what we have today with the current GT350 and 350R. I love the wire mesh grill that they have, the beautiful Guardsman blue stripes going all the way back. You have your Mustang with the red, white, and blue all the way over to one side. And then as we drop down, you'll see the Shelby name on that intercooler down there. Remember, this has a Whipple supercharger nicely set up, bringing air for the cooling, even for brake duct cooling. Nicely set up, no fog lamps, nothing fake on the front end of the business here. This is all fully functional stuff. You can see the large splitter that extends out from the front fascia. That's gonna give us downforce, that's gonna stop air from going underneath the car, because remember, air going underneath the car is gonna lift. We don't want lift, we want downforce. We want the car to be pushed down, but really that retro style, the nail is hit right on the top of the head there. Now, when we get up onto the hood, I really like this unique style of the hood. They took the GT350 script, brought it into the racing stripes with this functional hood scoop there. Nice rise to it, nothing too crazy, but really, really super clean, very aggressive all at the same time. And like I said, nice to see a Shelby GT350, a modern one that Carroll Shelby actually had input on its design and the whole creation. Now, as we come around the bend, what are we working with? Wheel and tire setup on this. You're gonna have these unique Krager wheels, you know, back in 1965, the 1960s, Krager mags were so popular. So you have this Krager custom design wheel. Look at that Shelby GT350 American logo there. Really, really nice setup. It's a 19 inch wheel, forged wheel. And then I also love just the overall shape of it. Now behind there, we have an awesome brake package. A lot of times people always say braking, they think Brembo. There's a lot of other companies out there besides Brembo making some really, really good braking equipment. You'll notice we have Willwood brakes on here. So you have this massive six piston caliper with the Shelby name there. And then you're gonna have that two piece rotor. So you have an aluminum hat with the Willwood name and you have that cross drilled, slotted and ventilated. Now the reason why they cross drill them, the reason why they slot the rotor is to dissipate heat. Same story with having a two piece rotor. The hat, which is the black portion is aluminum. The rotor is steel. So that's gonna help dissipate the heat, the aluminum a little bit better than just straight up steel. And then I even like the way they brought the Shelby name with the Krager name, two iconic names in the automotive world. Now, as we go down the side, one of my favorite badges, and I would love to see it more, even on today's Mustangs, is the Powered by Ford badge. So much history. You know, think about all the people who saw Ford versus Ferrari. That badge has so much meaning to them. And I, what I love, every time I bring up that movie, what I love about that movie, even if you're not a car person, people love the story. They love the story of Carroll Shelby and Ken Miles. And even though the movie isn't 100% accurate, my advice is read the book, go like hell, and you'll get the full painted picture of what went down back in 1966. But of course you're gonna have, if you got the racing stripes across the top, you gotta have the GT350 side stripe. Love the font, and I really love this lower sill extension that obviously goes all the way to the back. You can see we have a little bit of an extra design for airflow, and that's another thing. Kel Shelby isn't gonna put something in the car that's just there for looks. 
this is there with functionality. The racing stripes going all the way back. Now, one thing obviously with this being a 2011, there was no way to actually make a, a functional side vent per se. So these covers cover up the rear corner window, but they look really aggressive and they show that connection between the 65, 66, 67, and 68 Shelby GT350s. 69 and 70 was where they kind of got a little far away from the original idea of the vehicle. Coming out back, when we look at the rear setup, you're still gonna get those two-piece rotors even out back. And remember, when it comes to braking capability, you want most of the heavy-duty equipment up front. This is 265 on the width. So you're gonna get a little bit meatier rear tire, get that traction to the ground. We got that supercharged, Whipple supercharged power underneath the hood. And then coming out back, what are we working with here? Just like any other 2011 Mustang GT, we have this beautiful, nice kick-up spoiler on the trunklet. I love the way they blacked everything out really helps separate it from your standard Mustang GT during this 2011 time period. That Shelby American badge, even the way they integrated the Shelby logo nicely into that rear bumper area and the, the way they took the exhaust really shows that they wanted this car to stand out. They wanted this vehicle to stand out. This, like I said, this was a $33,995 option back during this time period. When you put that together with the price of a Mustang GT, you're looking at well over $60,000, but definitely if you were lucky enough to track one of these down, you would have a very, very special car. Let's go back to the front. I wanna kinda of showcase a little bit more what's going on with the front of this GT350, because I think something that kinda of gets lost in translation, and I think what we'll do is we'll use this red one to kinda of just show. So this front area, you can see just how much different this frontal area is on this, Mustang GT compared to what are we working with here? A lot more intricate design and really shows the thought process of what Carroll Shelby and his engineers were trying to come up with when flowing air, because it's all about air management, but it's also about power, 550 horsepower. Now, I guess the one downside is this car was kind of heavy. She was kind of heavy, 3,950 pounds, zero to 60 in about five, 0.2 seconds. The good news is, here's the good news at the end of the day. The good news is, is that you could get this car with an automatic or with a manual transmission. And they're both six speed. So the six speed automatic or the six speed manual, you have such a unique look. And the way that they kind of kept it rare at a cap of just 2,200 examples. Nice to know that, hey, the GT350 is at the end of the line again. Remember, they made Ford has made the current Shelby GT350 technically from 2015 to 2020. The Voodoo engine, that magical piece of engineering is also going away with it. But here is another little touch of not only Shelby history, but also Mustang history here at the Carlisle Ford Nationals sitting right here on the grassy field because it, you're gonna have this car is a standout when it comes to modify Mustangs. A lot of different companies, Steeda, Kenny Bell, Shelby, obviously, lots of different companies, but I think obviously when you say Shelby, that name brings so much weight to the table. It's ridiculous. And knowing that it has the horsepower, it's got the handling, and it definitely has the look and the rarity. This is gonna be a car that down the road is really gonna come up in value. And I think people, collectors are gonna go after it, especially if you had a 65 and then you get a 2011 and then you can finish it off with a Heritage Edition, just like I have my Shelby GT350R Heritage Edition. But if it's cars like these that you want to keep seeing on radius rides, where we're at events, we're finding really rare vehicles, low production numbers with a lot of horsepower that makes driving so much fun. Leave a comment in that comment section. Zero to 60 in 4.2 seconds. Sounds like a nice number there, zero to 60, to get that power to the ground. If you are new to the channel and you're wondering what's going on here with this Shelby, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, you know what it's all about here on Radies Rides. We love Shelby's. We love all cars, but Shelby has a very particular place in my life, especially growing up around my dad's 1969 Shelby GT350. So 
you know what it's all about. If you want to help us keep getting to these events and bringing you the content fresh, hit that, hit that not only hit the subscribe button, of course, but hit the link in the description. Get yourself some Radies Rise merch. I got to give it to my wonderful wife, Lori. She is working that camera like a champ here at the Four Nationals. It's general mission day. Hey, people are going to walk through. The show must go on. Show her some love because she's busting her butt out here. Thank you, Lori, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.